Hey guys, I'm 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 Nigel Law. Um So I I went I went to the movies the other day with the Apollo. I I got some snacks beforehand. I went to the concessions and the guy there was like, "Hey, my name's Jeff. How can I help you?" Which I what a jerk move, honestly. I really because I know that when a waiter or someone like that introduces themselves by name, there's no convention that says you have to respond with your own, but that does not stop me from feeling obligated every single time to like connect on a human level. <laughs> um, I think I I think I played it pretty cool this time. I was just like, oh, hey Jeff, I'm Nigel. I have a Kali and a B plus in physics. And sometimes I feel like the world wants me to be someone who I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, could I have a small Coke, please? And then he did something else that I thought was weird. He was like, small Coke, sure. Do you want to make that a medium for 50 cents extra? I was like, Jeff, thank you for looking into my heart and finding what I was too blind to see. <laughs> Why do managers make their cashiers ask you that? It's like when you post a photo of your sister on Facebook and Facebook's like, did you want me to tag your sister? Because I, I know that face anywhere. Do you just say the word like Facebook? <laughs> Take a breather, <laughs> sit this one out. Um, I don't, and it's like not even uncommon for managers to ask their cashiers this kind of thing. I went, I swear to God, I went into a Wendy's once I was like, hey, could I have three chocolate Frosties, please? Which I do not want judgment for. I was ordering for three people. <laughs> That's uh, me, myself, and I. It doesn't, um, um, not the point. I was like, could I have three chocolate Frosties? And she was like, absolutely. Would you like to add an additional Frosty today? I was like, what do you think we're doing? Who <laughs> comes into a Wendy's, specifically orders three Frosties, and then just upon request is like, heck, y'all yeah, want an additional Frosty? <laughs> um, <laughs> Fast, I gotta say, fast food is actually one of the many things that I miss now that I live in a college town. Um, I'm, like, I'm only two months into college and I have not seen a baby in that time. I'm really starting to miss it. Um, for I, you guys, I, I love babies. I think my favorite thing about babies is that that is a demographic that we as a society uh, have decided we can just kind of slide in the mix without anybody <laughs> noticing. Um, here's the thing about a baby's thought process. It's, it's rarely anything like this. Fancy that, I've, I've had an interesting thought. <laughs> Why ought to express that with language and such? It's usually a little bit more like, mm, that man's hat makes him look taller than he should. I should probably let everybody know with noise, which is why, which is why babies are the only members of this society who are capable without stimulus of just being like <laughs> Does that sound like a functioning member of society to you? Not to this cowboy. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I think it takes it takes humans a while to become generally aware, you know. And even as a toddler, we we do not have it down. Um, I can remember this time I was around four years old. I was hanging out at my aunt and uncle's house, um, and the doorbell rang. So I, I went up to my aunt and I was like, "Don't trouble yourself. I'll get it." And she said, "Well, honey, you're naked." <laughs> and I looked down, and it was true. <laughs> I. I think, and it, it's weird to think about that kind of thing now growing up, because I'm at this point in my life where, first of all, forgetting that you're naked will straight up ruin your first day of school, <laughs> especially if it is the second year in a row that it has happened. Um, but also where I, I have these increasingly pointless responsibilities, I think. Uh, for example, getting into college. What a waste of time. I don't, I, that's not, college is great. The things that you have to do to get into college are just righteously dumb. Now, uh, for example, the SAT, why, why did anyone, I wanna, let me put it this way, the SAT is about as pointless as, as the word the in the Home Depot. Um, <laughs> for, like that store is technically called the Home Depot, but if you say to someone, hey, I'm going to the Home Depot, you want anything? And they're like, I don't know which one, and you're like, I don't know, just any of the Home Depot. <laughs> you've, you've just transitioned to sounding like a fool. Um, that's how dumb the SAT is. And some people, for the low, low price of a thousand bucks an hour, you can get an SAT tutor, um, which sucks. I, I had one, and she was very nice, very helpful, um, but that does not mean that I wanted her inside my home. Um, there was this time I was asking her about the essay portion. I was like, is there anything I should be doing to prepare for that? She was like, not really. Here's, I would just look at the list of prompts, like right before you get in the shower, and just kind of think about it. Like, that's, that's a good shower task. I was like, there are shower tasks? <laughs> it's gotten to the point for young people where the authority figures in our lives can be like, so, what'd you do with your shower? <laughs> I, I cleaned my body. 
I, I just I don't want to hear anybody trying to tell me that they learned anything about the SA, from the SAT. You did not. Some people are like, well, you, you'll learn a lot of good SAT words. Let's remind ourselves, an SAT word is a word that was literally invented for the SAT. That's, I did some research into this. The, what happens is that every year the college board, uh, they sit in a circle, you crisscross applesauce, and um, <laughs> they just go around each saying a syllable until someone's like, stop, see what we got. Phantasmagorical. Great SAT word, guys. Let's get that in the actual dictionary. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you guys very much. Um, yeah.